The City of Niagara Falls Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee is pleased to present Niagara residents with an exciting opportunity to learn all about mental health at the Niagara Wellness Summit. So this idea basically started for near this time of 2016, so around November. We got a, um, a grant from the Ontario 150 project and essentially we wanted to use this grant to help our city, to help the youth in our secondary schools. So we thought about this, what is important to us? Well, mental health. What is important? Well, youth voice. So let's incorporate those together and let's make something that all these kids can come here, the leaders of their school, let's bring something back to their schools. And also today, each school um, in our region, the Five High School, received $1,000 in um, money so they can build their own initiatives at their school to provi provide services and to get the word across. Why is an event like this, do you feel, is so important to bring to Niagara and to Niagara residents? Well, I feel like this event is so important because the youth needs to know that there is not only just talk about stigma, that there is um, programs and organizations that are out there to help kids. And we need to get this word across because nowadays it's always talking about mental health, mental health this, mental health that. But how can we prevent this? How can we provide coping strategies? How can we provide uh, services that they can communicate with instead of being afraid of voicing their opinions? A passionate advocate for mental health, Valerie Pringle touches on the importance of speaking up and demanding help. I think the most important thing is that people have to talk and communicate about this. If they feel they need help, if they're a kid, you've got to trust an adult, trust a friend, trust someone, talk about it. Don't suffer in silence. It can be a mortal illness. Suicide is the number one cause of death from young people age 13 to 34. It can be serious. Don't overreact, but don't underreact. And Sometimes it's very hard to get help, but you have to demand it. You have to go and ask for it and seek it out. And, you know, there are lots of people here, you know, with various displays and stuff. I mean, there are people in schools. They've just had a great program today. You know, obviously people are interested enough to put this on. And what do you think are some of the benefits um, and the advantages for visitors that are, that are coming out to a summit like this? What do you think that they take away? I think what people want is just to hear some personal stories. So I talk about, you know, our daughter and our son, in fact, and what happened, the journey that we went through, why I became involved in such an advocate for mental illness. And also, you know, I've done a lot of research into this now because it interests me. So I think there's a lot to learn. And it's, it's sort of shocking, some of the statistics about unemployment and about the number of people affected. So I hope some of those things, you know, people take away. Do the schools have any sort of resources that can sort of help? I know in particular some schools they have uh, wellness rooms and so um, what consists in the wellness room is usually uh, coloring books, comfy chairs, like stress balls, things like that. Also each school has a person that they're able to go and talk to. A guidance counselor usually uh, has that role. I know all schools have that for sure. But yeah, the wellness room is mainly uh, what's implemented in both all the schools. The 200 students involved in today's summit hope that the day's events has reminded their peers to think well, feel well, be well. For The Source, I'm Melissa Andrade.